Hi, welcome back to another one of Surf Simply's Quick Tips. I'm Rue Hill. So today's quick tip is about your back foot. Again, this is one of the most common mistakes in surfing and, and actually when I'm doing these quick tip videos, the, reason, the way that I pick the topics is not necessarily just in the order that you need to learn everything, but I try and pick like the easy wins, the things that I know a huge amount of people are gonna find really, really helpful. So the first thing to understand about how a surfboard works and turns is that when you're on top of the board, there's really a bunch of secret, hidden, invisible buttons all over the surface of the board. A good way to think about the front part of the board is the accelerator. And a good way to think about the back half of the board is that it's like a steering wheel and it also serves as a brake. So when you put your weight forwards, you can't really turn. Well, let me qualify that. You can do trim turns that move the board slightly to the left or right by banking it rail to rail. But what you can't do is do big carving change of directions. When you put your weight right at the back of the board, you can push the tail in and lift the nose out of the water, and then you can do a big carving change of direction, but that burns off your speed. Now, later on, when we start talking about flow and putting the board in the critical part of the wave, you'll use those carving turns to take you back to the critical part of the wave or to the targets. Watch the video on surfing to the targets, and that's where you get your acceleration from. But a simplistic way of thinking about your, your feet and where they are on the board is that your front foot's kind of like an accelerator, your back foot's kind of like your steering wheel. So the biggest problem that most people have when they're trying to do turns is very simply that they don't put their back foot far enough back. I want you to imagine that you've just had an argument with someone and you want to walk out of the room and dramatically slam the door to make a point. You're going to grab the door by the handle, right? That gives you lots of leverage to swing the door shut because your hand is a long way away from the hinges. If you try to push the door with your fingertips only an inch or two away from the hinges, it's going to be difficult to achieve that dramatic effect. So you grab it by the handle and in just the same way, if you imagine the hinges are the center of your surfboard, the handle of the door is way back right by the tail. So when you see surfers performing really powerful carving turns that create a radical change of direction, you see all that beautiful spray go up in the air, you'll notice that their foot is right at the very back of the surfboard. Now, when you first stand up on the wave, depending on how big your board is, it's difficult to have your foot right at the back because otherwise your weight will be back there too and the board will stop. So you often need to stand with both feet further forwards and only a few seconds before you know, you know you're going to do a turn, that's when you'll move your foot back. I'll talk a little bit in your video about, how to, about your stance and about your knees. I'll talk a little bit about how you move your foot without moving your weight. But what I want you to take away from this video is this. If you ever try to do a carving turn and the board tips instead of turning, if you bog a rail and the board tips over instead of carving all the way around, that means that your foot probably wasn't far enough back. That's not the only part of the equation, but 90% of the time, that's the limiting factor, even if you've got everything else right. So practice when you're coming up to a turn, getting your foot right at the back of the board. And you know what? If you're experimenting with how far back to get your back foot, sometimes it should actually go off the back. You should slip off. Because sometimes when you're trying to do something, you should get it wrong by not doing it enough, but also get it wrong by doing it too much. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, my foot's never slipped off the back of your board, that's probably a pretty good sign that you're not putting your foot far enough back. And if you're lucky enough to see video of yourself surfing and you see yourself try to do a turn and the turn just is really slight and it's not the radical Kelly Slater-like turn you were hoping for when you initiated it, have a look at how far your back foot is from the back of the board. And it should be like this far away. Most of the time, it's more like this far away. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about our coaching courses, you can go to surfsimply.com. See you next time. Bye.